Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 4.2, Direction, Fields, and Numerical Methods. So now that you guys know what a differential equation looks like, right, um, we're going to go ahead and start sort of working with them, right? Um, and the very first thing that we're going to be able to do with them is these things called direction fields, right? Um, they're one of the many methods that uh, mathematicians and whoever works with uh, 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 differential equations, one of many methods that we have uh, that allows us to sort of at least see how something behaves, right? Without actually being able to write it out explicitly, okay? Uh, one of the many numerical methods that we have uh, to solve something out, okay? So uh, let me first cover what it is. And then at the very end of the section, I'm gonna show you guys sort of an application uh, in, uh, in circuits that actually sort of encompasses what we need the direction fields for, okay? Uh, so first of all, I wanna go ahead and define, right? What a direction field is or a slope field. You can call them either one. Direction field, a slope field um, is a mathematical object used to graphically represent solutions to a first order differential equation, okay? Um, at each point in the direction field, right, a line segment uh, appears and the slope is equal to the slope of the solution for the differential equation, okay? So essentially, uh, if you take a look at it, let me, let me scroll down to the very first example, right? If you take a look at a slope field, right? And if you take a look at a differential equation, so let's take this one right here, right? Uh, this uh, differential equation, right, it requires an X and a Y uh, to sort of find whatever the derivative is, right? And if you just look at the sort of like, if, if you remember calc one, right, uh, dy over dx means a slope. So in this case, right, uh, what we have here is we're defining a slope at a particular point X, Y. That's essentially it. So. Uh, just to show you guys how this is going to be working out, uh, I'm going to do a couple points here, okay, for this particular slope field, for this particular um, uh, for this particular differential equation, okay. So at one one, that means that I can do my dy right over dx is equal to one and one, so it's going to be one squared minus one squared. That is zero. Cool. So at one one right? My slope should be zero. So here's one, here's one, here's my slope zero, right? Let's move on to the next one at two one. So dy over dx, that's supposed to be a slope, right? Is, uh, it's going to be the x first, right? So two squared minus one squared, that's four minus one is equal to three. So that is, that's supposed to be my slope, right at two comma one. So two comma one, that's this slope right here. You guys can take a look at that, right? I'm trying to highlight them as, uh, as I go through them, right? Next one, at two comma three. So this is going to be uh, dy over dx is equal to two, so two squared, right? Uh, minus three squared four minus nine, and that is negative five. That's the next slope, right? And if we take a look at two comma three, right? Two comma one, two, three, there it is. That's that one. Notice that the slope is negative, right? And it's very steep because it's five, right? Okay. Get my sip of tea in there. Okay, so that's how a differential uh, equation, the graphical version of a differential equation, AKA uh, a slope field or a direction field, that's how these work, okay? Now, uh, I hope you guys noticed that this is hopefully the one and only time that you will ever have to do these by hand to place them on the X and Y axis. I'm just doing it just to show you guys how these work, okay? Nearly every single time that you're gonna be requested to work with a slope field, they're gonna tell you to do it using a graphing utility, some sort of computer, okay? Um, once you get into your uh, field of study, uh, you'll hopefully learn 
a couple of programming languages or a couple of um, uh, a couple of bits of software, uh, like for example, Mathematica or MATLAB, uh, that will, you know, with a little bit of coding, uh, you will be able to plug this in and it will give you your picture. Okay. Um, and once you get to that high end level of study, right, you'll be doing that for a particular reason. Okay. Whether it be the stresses of, you know, um, a concrete slab uh, or uh, the currents uh, or resistances uh, in a circuit or um, the change in heat uh, over a surface as it passes through the atmosphere, all of those things require uh, the slope field. Okay. But like I said, all of those are going to be requiring a computer in order for you to do them, right? They're not going to make you do all the all these slopes by hand, right? Computing a uh, heat off of a space shuttle. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I know you guys don't know how to, com at least some of you don't know how to compute uh, 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 slope fields or know the programming required to actually do a slope field using one of the various uh, softwares that I just mentioned. So for that, I have, um, I've got two real good ones. Okay. Uh, these are it. Okay. Uh, either uh, both of them separately by themselves, right. Don't give you, um, the best, uh, they, they don't give you the entire toolkit, right. But both of them together will. Okay. Um, and, more, more than anything, both of these together is uh, what you're going to need at least to get through this section, probably even into uh, Calc 3. And then once you get to dif differential equations, you'll be able to get through that as well with these things. Okay. So uh, go ahead, play around with these as much as you need to. Okay. Um, but now the general use of a direction field is to investigate the behavior of a solution to a first order differential equation, which may or may not have a solution. So we don't know, for example, let me go back to, up to this, uh, the very first example. We know what the direction uh, of our solutions are gonna look like. These are sort of the directions. All of these are sort of, uh, they sort of provide a direction for what a solution is gonna look like, right? But we don't know what they look like themselves. Okay, we can discern, right, what our solution is going to do based on the derivative's behavior, based on the differential equation and its slope field. Okay, so that's what you usually use it as, right? Um, and the way that, in, in order to find uh, a particular solution, which is what we're more concerned with, right, uh, the idea here is that you follow uh, the, the direction of the flow and the way that um, I know this sounds very non-mathy, uh, a non-mathy way to describe this, but really picture dropping a like a floaty ball or a tennis ball, right? Picture dropping one like a ball in a stream. And what you're going to be doing is following its direction, right? And then from that direction, you can discern sort of like the rest, okay? And as you might imagine, right? If you drop a tennis ball in a particular part, of the stream, right? It might take a different path, right? So then that means uh, that solution would be different, okay? So what the hell do I mean by that, right? So let's go ahead, go back to uh, another example. It's a different one. So let's take this one. So here's our differential equation right here. dy over dx is equal to x minus y, okay? And I wanna sketch two different solutions right, uh, for the differential equation given above, okay? And really this is gonna be eyeballing it for a little bit. So let me zoom in on the differential equation, the slope field itself. I'm gonna try to put it like smack dab in the middle so we can play around there, there we go, okay? So, like I said, uh, picture this, you know, grab a tennis ball, throw it in this stream right? And just follow the flows, right? I know that sounds uber weird, but we're going to go ahead and sort of, I'm going to go ahead and try to show you how this works out, okay? So I'm going to ch change the color of my pen, and I'm literally going to drop a ball somewhere, right? So I'm going to drop my tennis ball right here, 
okay? And I'm gonna follow the flow. So if you take a look, everything sort of around this point, right, is heading in this direction. And I'm gonna make this a thick black line. You guys can see what I'm talking about. So everything in this direction sort of looks like it's gonna go like that. Right, and then about here, it's gonna snap over and do something like that. If you guys notice how this is working out. And then it sort of goes that way, right? And then before that, it goes this way. Here's one solution. You guys see that? Okay. Let me draw a second solution, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and you know change the color of my pen again. I'm gonna go ahead and use a green one now, and I'm gonna drop another tennis ball in the stream, right? At a different spot, I'm gonna drop it down here. I'm gonna go way down here, right? So there's my tennis ball, right? And again, I'm gonna grab my my uh, my pen, right? I'm just gonna follow, I'm gonna follow the direction of the stream, right? Wherever it takes me. And it looks like it does this, and eh, not that, not that yet. Maybe go like this, go like this, and then whoosh. Okay. So these are all solutions, right? Uh, both of these are solutions, uh, particular solutions to my differential equation, okay? Now, let's go ahead and answer the next question down, okay? So I'm gonna put right here for A, right? I'm just gonna put uh, the two black lines, right? So the two black lines are different solutions, right? Now, the next question is asking, find the uh, solution through the initial condition negative five comma zero. So what that means is if you, uh, if you uh, sort of use the stream analogy, right? Um, I want to drop my tennis ball, right? Directly at the point negative five comma zero. Right, so let's go and move over to my to, uh, to my slope field one more time. Okay, I want to drop my tennis ball exactly at negative five comma zero. So I'm dropping my tennis ball right there, right, and I'm going to try to follow what direction uh, my uh, what direction uh, my tennis ball is going to flow in. Right, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go back to this thing. I'm going to change this. Right, and if you take a look, the, it looks like the, the flow is telling me to go like this and then whoosh it out back this way, right? It goes like this and then flattens out and then, whoa, kind of hard to draw these, but something like <clears throat> something like this and then whooshes out in that same direction that way, right? And actually, uh, I'm gonna draw it in blue to sort of designate this as another solution, right? And then if we take a look at how it's supposed to be acting before that, it looks like it's supposed to do something like that, right? So this right here, this blue line would be this, uh, the particular solution that goes through negative five comma zero, okay? So hopefully, I know this sounds, you know, for all the stuff that's in math, right? This sounds like the most opposite thing that you can possibly think of in terms of how to explain, you know, a solution mathematically. Is it drop a tennis ball in the river, see where it goes. That's exactly what it is. I'm not kidding, okay? Um, ah, got a sip of my tea there. So then the solution through the initial condition that, right, would be the blue line, right? I'm gonna actually use the blue pen, the blue line. L U E line, okay? Okay. So uh, let me move on to uh, a, a really good application for what all of this does, okay? So I want to define something here, okay? Uh, let's consider a differential equation, right? That can be written in terms of a function x and y. So this is uh, some combination of x and y that give you slopes, right? An equilibrium solution, okay? Is any solution to the differential equation of the form y equals c, 
y equals c, um, and c can be any constant value. So y equals c is uh, on an x y plane, right? That is just a horizontal line. That's all it is. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything if you have a solution uh, that is a constant line, right? A constant uh, horizontal line. That is what we call an equilibrium solution. Okay. And those have pretty important uh, applications in the real world. So for all of you who want to be uh, specifically, specifically electrical engineers, right? Um, this is a real common um, sort of uh, problem that you get in, um, in, uh, um, in your first semester circuits class, right? Uh, this is before you get into upper division stuff, before you start studying like uh, the real hard stuff for your major, okay? Um, one of the things that you can do, right, is what do you, one of the things that you have to get comfortable with as an electrical engineer uh, is learn how to play around with circuits and then describe them mathematically, okay? And that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, we have what's called a resistor inductor circuit, okay? And it's a pretty common circuit. Um, believe it or not, it turns out to be sort of like the innards of your old school home doorbell. So if you, uh, if you remember, you know, going up to, you know, your friend's house, you press the little button right inside the house, it goes ding dong. Uh, this is the circuitry behind, uh, this is the circuitry behind, uh, you know, that doorbell, okay? Uh, for this circuit, we're gonna be analyzing specifically the current passing through the circuit. So here's a, a a sort of like an, an electrical diagram of what this circuit's gonna look like, okay? You've got a battery or a power source of some sort, okay? You have um, a resistor, so something that resists current, you have to cook off the voltage in a current uh, or in a, in a circuit somehow. So that's what the resistor does. You have this thing called an inductor, which I'm gonna explain, right? And then you have this thing called the switch. This is the thing that you would probably call uh, sort of like the doorbell button, right? Where you go up to the door and you just press it and it goes ding dong, right? Okay, so in particular, what we're gonna be looking at is this, an inductor, okay? And what an inductor does is it slows down current, okay? So the best way I can describe it, okay? If you've ever been next to like heavy machinery, right? Or if you've been uh, next to something that requires a lot of power, right? But it takes time to charge up, right? Um, when you, uh, you know, flip the switch on, okay, um, some of these devices, what they tend to do is they have this, like, growing, increasing hum. You, like, switch the, you know, switch the switch, and it goes, right, okay? So uh, that's what an inductor does. It sort of slows down the current uh, for this apparatus, whatever it is, uh, to sort of hook up, to, to be ready. Right? It doesn't have the entire amount of current going through it all at one time. Uh, the, inductor, the inductor slows that current down, okay? The way that we describe the current, right, through this kind of circuit is this right here. This is the differential equation that is for a resistor inductor circuit, okay? Uh, the L is the inductance measured in Henry's. The I is the current measured in amps. The R is the resistance in ohms. The E is the battery measured in volts. And all of this is measured over some T seconds. Okay, cool. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna do part A. I have a four Henry inductor. Whoa. I have a four Henry inductor uh, going over a 60 volt battery and the switch is placed into the current picture, okay? And it's got a 12 ohm res uh, resistor on it too, okay? I want to derive the first order differential equation that describes the change in the current over time uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this circuit, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just plug in what I need to plug in into this thing. I've got all the values. Right, and in particular, what I want to do is solve for di dt. So I want to solve for this thing. Okay, so off to the races. I know my uh, inductor, my L is supposed to be four, so it's going to be four di oh, di over dt, right? Plus my resistance, 
which is 12, I, right, is equal to E, my voltage, right? And that's 60, right? So I'm gonna solve for di dt, right? So I'm gonna move this uh, 12i on the other side and then divide by four. So uh, the uh, wrong i, di over dt, I'm gonna put this four di dt is 60 minus 12i, right? Divide by four, divide by four, almost done. Uh, di over dt is 60 over four, that's 15. And then four divided by, uh, 12 divided by four is minus three i. There we have it. We have the differential equation that describes uh, the current passing through the circuit over some time. We have at least a change in uh, current over some time, right? Cool, so let's move on to part B. I want to analyze the slope field, right? For the differential equation uh, derived in part A and provide two different solutions to my slope field, okay? Uh, I also want to provide a particular solution, right, for the initial condition one comma zero. So this means if you take if you take the analogy the analogy that I was using before, drop the tennis ball in the in the stream and see where it goes, right? I want to drop it at a particular point. In this case, one comma zero. Okay, so let's go back to dropping balls in the stream, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose maybe right here about. So I'm going to draw the ten, drop the tennis ball right there. And if you guys take a look, right, uh, I'm going to make it a thick black line. There we go. Take a look. It looks like my my stream is making me go like this, right? And then it just sort of keeps dropping down this way. Whoosh, right? Okay. Let's do one more. I'm going to do a green one. Uh, actually, let me do an orange one. So the orange one, let me choose another point, right? I'm going to choose this one right here, right? And again, I'm going to do my black line, right? And I'm going to tell that this thing goes like that, that way, right? And then it drops down this way like so, right? So the black lines, right? are two particular solutions. Okay. The two plaque lines are two particular solutions. Okay. Now I want to do the one uh, solution that goes through the initial condition one comma zero. So uh, this time I'm going to use my, uh, I'm going to use my, oh, what color should I use? I'll, I'll use the green ball. I want it to go through here in particular, right? I want to go through there, right there in particular. And I want to do it in a, a blue line for this one. So you can tell it starts off like going straight up, right? And then there's a little curve that happens. It looks like it wants me to do that. And then I sort of, I know I'm not drawing it the best way possible, but you guys understand what's going on and it sort of wants to do that and it goes whoosh this way right so the green line or the sorry the blue line right passes through right one comma zero so now let me do a little bit more analysis, okay, to show you guys what the heck we just did, right? Because right now it just seems like we're, you know, dropping, you know, tennis balls in streams and just sort of drawing lines following uh, where the little lines go, right? And I mean, that's what we're doing, but we're not putting in the application. We're not putting in the context for what we've been doing, okay? So remember the description of the problem up above is talking about the current running through a circuit, right? Over some time t. So 
if you take a look, right, uh, my x-axis is some time t, right? And this is supposed to be seconds, right? And then my uh, vertical axis, right? This is supposed to be the current, i, right? So we have two things here, right? We have the current on the y-axis, right? On the vertical axis. And then we have time in seconds on uh, the horizontal x-axis, right? Okay, so now the question is, let's analyze a little bit more of what's happening, right? So what we're doing here, right, is as we flip the switch, right, each one of these solutions, each one of these lines, right, provides uh, the current, right, the amount of current that's running through our circuit at a particular time. You guys can sort of understand that, right? So each one of these lines, this one, right, this one, and this one, depending on when we, you know, flip the switch, depending on when we hit the, the button for the doorbell, right, provides us the amount of current that's going through our circuit at a particular time, T, okay? Now, I want you guys all to notice something here, that they all sort of end up hugging this thing right here. You guys see that? That as you, you know, hit the button, right, as you hit the button uh, for the doorbell, uh, all of these buttons, they sort of sort of top out at a particular value, right? And that value i equal five, right, is where they all sort of top out. You guys see that they sort of become asymptotic. All of these solutions end up becoming asymptotic at that value five, right? And it turns out this right here, right, is an equilibrium solution. Highlight that in pink. And this actually has a pretty big significance here, right? And if, because if you look at what we've been sort of analyzing, what we have here, right? Um, all of our solutions, right? All of our solutions, all of the, the blue line, the black line, the other black line, any line we can, you know, sort of slap onto this graph, right? They all become asymptotic, right? At y equal or at i equal five, right? They all sort of just turn and they just hover at five, right? Okay, and that has a pretty big significance if you take a look at it. So uh, I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna explain it, right? Uh, as, so let me actually put this, um, all solutions, right? Become asymptotic. at i equal five, right? The current equal five. And what we ended up doing here, right? If you now take it a little further, right? Uh, let me write it first. What we ended up finding here, right, is if we close the circuit, right, we close the circuit uh, and we let the time just go on to infinity, right, we can see that all of these uh, solutions, right, like I said, they become asymptotic at i equal five. That means that our current, the entire current that's supposed to be running through our circuit is five amps. Pretty important when you are uh, constructing circuits for, you know, some gizmo or gadget, okay? And in this case, it's for a home doorbell. So basically saying, right, uh, for this example in particular, if you hit the doorbell, if you go and hit the, your doorbell and go ding dong, right? If you hold it, if, if you hit the switch and you hold it there, right? And this is the circuitry that lives sort of behind that doorbell then the maximum amount of current that's gonna be running through that circuit is five amps. That's it, okay? Uh, 
this is sort of uh, like, like I said at the beginning, this is the numerical method for how to solve uh, differential equations, okay? Uh, when you get to differential equations like this, right, there are gonna be ways to solve these outright using calculus, right? Uh, but for those that don't, right, uh, there are gonna be these numerical solutions, these numerical methods to figure out the solutions, okay? Uh, once you get farther along uh, in differential equations, you'll see more of these, okay? I believe that is it. After this, it's, uh, after this, it's a uh, um, lecture questions. So I- Water the plants. <laughs> Julio, here is your reminder. Water the plants. So my Alexa just reminded me of something as you guys couldn't hear. Um, that is it, I am done. I am done with this section. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, drop me a line, come visit me on my Friday hours or my office hours, okay? Uh, and 